Hello, welcome back to Fix It In Post. My name is Nick and today we are going into a very exciting tutorial, one that you've all been waiting for. It is the very coveted Gears Cogs tutorial, or should I say Cogs Gears tutorial. Now picture this guys, you go in on Monday morning and your boss comes up to you and says, hey, you know what, I had an epiphany. I really would like to make a video where we show innovation, we want to show the, the mechanisms of industry turning, uh, we want to show productivity. How can we do that? And you go, well, you know what, over the weekend, I did a little bit of uh, research and a little bit of digging and I found this amazing tutorial and how to basically show that in a video format. You're welcome. Now, let's get started. First, first, we need to first make a cog. So, how do we do that? Let's make a, a comp. Let's make it 1080 by 1080. I like to make them square because, you know, circles fit in squares. We'll make it like, I don't know. We don't, it doesn't really matter how long it is. It could be like one frame for all we care, but we'll just say 10 seconds in this case. Um, and let's call this the cog. All right, now. You got to turn this thing on here. See this little button down here? This is called the choose grid and guide options. Click that. Make sure title and action safe is up. This is because we want those crosshairs, those coveted crosshairs. So let's go to the pen tool and uh, we'll turn the stroke off for the meantime. And what we'll do is we'll select the, uh, we'll select like a gray. It doesn't have to be gray. It can be whatever you like. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's choose a nice color. Let's choose, uh, no, let's choose gray. Let's be, let's be boring. Okay. Gray it is. Um, it's just gonna, we're gonna pick, so what I'm gonna do is gonna draw something at the very edge of this crosshair. We're gonna go up, sort of a, a bit of, a, we're gonna try and draw a bit of a trapezoid. We're draw, drawing the first tooth of the gear. So let's, uh, let's do that. Um, okay, let's try and get it as symmetrical as possible. This is probably the hardest part of the tutorial. Um, Let's make sure that everything lines up nicely. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, the more symmetrical it is, the better the result will definitely be. Now let's just double check. You can kind of see it's pretty close. All right. So what we're going to do next is we want to make sure we want to put the teeth. Actually, it looks a bit small. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Let's make this a little bit taller. Just, just for good measure. Okay, that's a bit better. All right, what we want to do is we want to make, we want to pull this tooth up to the top, but see what happens here if I just click on it and move it up, um, it drags the anchor point with it. And I don't want that. I want to keep the anchor point where it is, but drag the path up. So what we can do is if you twirl down here and if you twirl down the shape and then you twirl on the path, it actually gives you these points and that's what you want to see. So if you just drag around the path, and then we'll drag it up somewhere around there, not too far away. What happens is you can see is that the anchor point stays there, but the path has gone up here and that's perfect. And I'll show you why in a second. So firstly, let's go down to where it says contents and it says add. Let's use our magic uh, filter repeater. This is the most amazing um, shape tool, I reckon. It can do so many things. Let's go to the position and we'll click zero. We'll make it zero in the position. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the rotation. I'm just going to turn off the um, the toggle transparency grid because it's just a bit easier to see. All right, let's turn the rotation. You can kind of see we've got, if you can imagine, we've got three teeth and they're kind of going around a circle as you can kind of see. Like there's only three, but we'll, what happens is we turn up the copies it'll actually make a full circle for us, which is great. Uh, maybe we'll make 26, 26. All right, we're just, we're just gonna, now that's probably, see how the, the two, we're gonna make them all sort of equally spaced. So we're just gonna hold down the command. I think on, on Mac it's command, but on PC, I believe it is control. But we're just gonna hold down the control button and then sort of slowly push this around till we get it. So 13.9 seems to be the magic number. All right, now what we're gonna do next is we're going to make a circle. Um, this is a little bit harder, but what we're gonna do is we're going to drag a circle out like this and we're gonna hold down 
option, all right, if you're on a Mac, it's option command home to make sure that the anchor point, this anchor point actually sits right in the center. Uh, if you're on a PC, it is control command, sorry, control alt home. So as you see here, that's what it does. You see it's snapped up to the center. Now, now we have to press command home or control home. Command home if you're on a Mac, control home if you're on a PC. And this will snap this to the center of the frame. Now, as you can see here, we've got a bit of a line or a gap here. So what we want to do is we want to make sure this is big enough to just fill, this. we want to make sure, sorry, if we go down, twirl down this, this ellipse tool, we want to make sure the size of it is just big enough to cover that completely. And that's good. Alrighty. Now, what we want to do next is we want to uh, outline this this thing. We want to give it an outline. You don't have to. I mean, you could you could easily not outline it. Um, we could easily just draw the inside lines um, and would not worry about the outside lines. But if you do want outside lines, this is the way that I kind of like doing it. Um, so firstly, I would duplicate this layer. So we'll just call this, I'm going to rename it. So this is just teeth fill and we'll call this middle fill. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate both of these things and I'm going to move them both below. I'm going to call this middle stroke <laughs> and teeth stroke. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to grab both of these and I'm going to turn on the stroke for both of them. Um, sorry, let's turn on the stroke and we'll make sure that's a, that's solid. And as you can see, it automatically pre-fills it. We can actually adjust the stroke for both of them if we want to make it thicker or thinner, but I think eight is not bad. Let's make it 12 because we're already there. Now, if we want to add a few more details in the middle, what we can do is we can duplicate this uh, middle fill, go to the ellipse tool, and then we can shrink down the size of, okay, let's turn on the stroke as well for this one. So you can just click the fill here and it'll just automatically fill. Uh, I've got it set to black, but you can set it to whatever color you like. Uh, let's make it a bit smaller, just within the rim. Um, we can even put a bit more detail if you like. We can duplicate it again and put a bit more detail in the middle. We'll make this a smaller line just to make it... Uh, yeah, about there. And we can do like the very center because, you know, cogs have a very... have a center. And... And you, you know, you can make that a different color too. Like, I don't know, let's make that dark. So it looks a bit more interesting. And there you have it. We have our first cog. Now, um, what I like to do is I like to create a null, null object, or a null object. And uh, it should snap, it should appear right in the middle. And what we can do is we can just drag those, we'll parent that to the middle null. And we can scale that up. So that is uh, pretty big. Okay. Now, let's drag that into a new comp. So that's that's our that's our cog designed. Now let's drag that into a new comp. Uh, let's call this cog spinning. And uh, I should have really let's uh, I'm gonna I should have tidied this up a little bit. Um, oh, we'll just put these in the old basket. So this is cog sample. Put these old ones. We're only looking at these ones. All right, cog spinning. Now the comp is, oops, the comp, let's change the comp size. So, okay, now we've designed the cog, let's make a new comp. So let's go 1920 by 1080. And let's make, call this cog spinning. Look, we wanna make this spin. So what you could do is you could, Set a keyframe there and then set a keyframe here. And you know, well, let's make this a hundred. We'll do make it do a hundred revolutions and voila, it is spinning round and it's amazing. However, just say for example, um, you know, you need to make the comp a little bit longer. So um, let's say we need to make it 30 seconds. So you could um, drag it out to the end and then 
you know, make it spin some more, but it's kind of screwing up your keyframes. And also, if you do have in the instance where it is 10 frames like this, um, because the cog isn't actually moving, um, as in we're, we're keyframing the cog, in, we're keyframing the comp, not the actual cog, there's no animation inside. What I recommend is just go to time and go freeze frame, and then this becomes as long or as short as you like. And so it's basically just making that a still picture. But what's great is that if you go here um, and you do change anything, for example, like the fill, um, you decide to change these. Actually, I should have made this a little bit better. But actually, we can we can still keep the fill the same as it is. So you decide to make these red. Um, you know, that's that's cool because um, it'll just it'll just update. It'll still just update the colors. So not to worry. Um, well, let's go back to the gray. Now, the reason I pre-comp all this is because, oh wait, before we go into that, I'll show you how to do the rotation. So let's, um, let's do, you don't need to, I wouldn't suggest keyframing the rotation that way. That's actually quite cumbersome. What we can do is we can use an expression, our good friend's expression. So let's alt click or option click on the rotation. Let's type in time times um, 100. And we'll see what happens. There you go, it's kind of already spinning. I'm just gonna switch this to, this, is, this previous has taken a little bit longer than I like. Okay, so as you can see, it's now spinning on its own accord and it doesn't matter how long or how short it is, it's just spinning at a rate that we've set. Now, if you wanna understand what this means, time is just, we're just saying, we're just telling the cog that at this particular time, we wanted to set a value times 100. So it's gonna take the time, which is zero, and then times it by 100. So right now it's obviously zero, but when you get to one, you can see that at 24 frames, oh sorry, at tw uh, sorry, at one second, it times once it's it's one second times 100, and we get 100 uh, degrees. And then obviously at two seconds, it becomes 200 degrees, uh, as you can see, and so on and so forth. So you can kind of do it, and to increase the rate, obviously you just increase the number. The, the rate at which the number, it's spinning very fast. You can't really see it's spinning so fast. You ever seen that thing where the bike spin, the, the, the wheel spins so fast that it looks like it's going backwards? All right, well, if you, you know what I mean. Anyway, or we can just set the rate even lower. So here you can see that it's spinning or we can set it to be exactly the time and it goes very slow. One, one, uh, one degree a second essentially is what it's doing. So, but let's set it back to 100. I thought that was kind of a good number. Now, let's see. We, now what you can do now is we'll duplicate this cog and let's, let's move it over here. And if you play it back, it's weird because they're both spinning in the same direction, which is not what we want. So if you press EE, -E, that'll bring up the expression that's been set on this cog. E. Ugh. E, e brings up the expression. I don't know why it wasn't working just then. And let's set this to minus. So times, time, times, minus 100. And so it'll spin the other direction. And so now we've got a cog that spins in the opposite direction. It looks like they're spinning off each other. Now let's set another one. We'll duplicate it again. And we can put this one on this side. We'll make this smaller. It doesn't seem to matter that it's smaller. It seems to be fine. And then let's do this. Beautiful. Let's set another. Let's get another cog going. Let's put another one here, right? And I'm going to grab one more. Let's set get the original one, and I'm going to put. Oops, I think I made the wrong one. This we forget this one. We're going to here. I'm going to shrink this one down, and this one will come off this one. And here we go. Now. That's pretty much the tutorial in a nutshell. Now I'm gonna tell you why I pre-comped all this stuff, mainly because uh, it, it just means that you only have to change one comp if you wanna change a whole bunch of them. Um, so for example, just for example, just say your, your boss comes in and says, hey, I actually wanna change all the cogs to the color like white or you know yellow or something. So you can just come in, uh, just click that one cog and go, all right, let's make this all yellow. Um, Let's say this yellow, it's kind of an ugly yellow, or gold or brass, whatever you like. Let's make them brass looking cogs. You go back and they're all been updated. So you only have to do that once, as opposed to if you did it, if you just made one 
cog, you would have to go through every single cog and change them all. But if you just pre-comp them, it means that the changes you do for one cog should propagate through all the other cogs. So that's kind of why pre-comp, uh, pre pre-cog, pre-cog is another thing from Minority Report. Pre-comp all this stuff, um, basically so it's easy to change colors and stuff. Now, you might not want that. Um, say, for example, you just want to uh, change individual colors. Um, you want to make each cog individual colors. So what I would suggest is go to chain, go to type in, go to the effects filter here, uh, effects and presets and go change, look for change to color. Let's drag that on. Um, I like to grab this and let's change this to, let's say we want to make this the brass, the brass color that we were looking at before. Um, and then change this to hue and saturation. Uh, hue and lightness for that? No, I don't like that. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't look like it sets it exactly to what I want it to be. Actually, I don't like that. Why? Why are you not doing what I want you to do? Normally, it's pretty good, but it's kind of not doing anything that I want to do. Let's try that again. I don't I don't know what happened, but it wasn't working the way that I liked it to. Maybe it doesn't work very well with dark colors. Maybe I've just found a reason why it doesn't work. Um, change by transforming to color. No. That's better. So I guess you have to go hue and lightness saturation. That actually changes that gray. And then you go transforming to color as opposed to setting to color, which I think is the default, which is... I didn't know that, but anyway, so that's kind of what you could do. Um, and then if you want to just change, you can go through and change the other ones. Oops, I want to copy this one. So let's, so click that, edit, copy, and then we'll paste that effect on here. Um, and we can change the color of this to something else. So let's make that a bit more red. And we'll do that again. Uh, we can change this to something a bit more green. And one more time. It looks like steampunk, doesn't it? A little, a little, not a lot, but a little. <laughs> yeah, you wish it was steampunk. All right, so here we go. So that's kind of one way you could do it. And if you don't like any of those colors, um, you could always just turn them all off, but we'll keep them on for the meantime. All righty, so look, um, I know that you want to impress your boss on Monday with these this amazing COG tutorial. Um, you're very welcome, by the way. Um, the project file will be ready sometime. Hopefully, at the end of this tutorial, it'll be ready for you to pick up. But look, guys, thanks for watching, and um, I will see you next time, hopefully not too far away. Thanks. Oh, by the way, if you haven't seen Han Solo, and this is not a sponsor for the movie, although if somebody would like to sponsor this channel, that'd be great. But look, I enjoyed Solo. Um, don't go over too many expectations. Just go on and enjoy a, a fun movie. Um, but then that being said, I did enjoy The Last Jedi. So if you didn't like The Last Jedi, maybe you don't want to like Sans Solo. All right. See you guys. Bye.